Is it time? Are we here? I can't. What's wrong with my stupid mic? Let me refresh the screen maybe. Uh, we're probably live. It says we're live. It's funny. It tells me we're live before we even click the thing. All right. That's like my best dance moves ever. It really is. I captured them perfectly. I know, I know. <laughs> it's like it's like Elaine herself trained me. Who? Elaine. Oh, yeah. Elaine Bennis. Yes. yes. Well, you know, it's just our friend Elaine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's how I said it. It was just it was so nonchalant like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Patricia. I think it did better when I was. Oh, I got like mumbly mouth now. Do you see this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fast talker. That's awesome. I'm like the Micro Machines guy. Yeah, you, you are. Micro you even guys. look like him. <laughs> <laughs> now my, my thing <laughs> calibrated so beautiful right off the bat. Uh, it's just kind of funny. And now it's all jittery. Uh, it is. It's it's nice, though. <laughs> uh, so we have a wonderful show for everybody. Let me try getting this stupid thing to recalibrate better. We are going to talk about the upcoming U.S. holiday. Yay. What is it? Black Friday? Uh, yep. Cyber Monday? Both. Yeah, I would say so. Howdy, DB. Howdy. Uh, yep. Did that work better? We yeah. need it. I got some wonky eyes today. <laughs> <laughs> Good you know, I, I go back and forth. Oh crap! Dang it. That's something over. Hold on, I'll be back. Tell jokes. All right, and I, I did get some queued up already. Um, what did the turkey say to the turkey hunter on Thanksgiving? Quack quack. <laughs> um, why did the turkey join the band? Because he had his own drumstick. Uh, <laughs> you know you overdid it at Thanksgiving when you thought the serving size for turkey was one. I don't know. that. I didn't reread re that one. That wasn't a good one. Uh, what do you call a running turkey? Fast food. <laughs> <laughs> that one was good. I didn't hear the others. They were bad. They were bad. Yeah, that was I good. wanted to end on a high note. That's funny. Yeah, my calibration wasn't work it, worth it. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I raised and my desk, and then I was lowering the desk, and it hit something and knocked a bunch of stuff over. <laughs> oh, man. So note to self. Yeah, note to self. Look to see what was near the desk raising and lowering area. Yep. <laughs> you know how like at uh, factories you have that rope, like a, a perimeter to say, don't enter this area or you may die. That's yes. kind of like how that would go. Yeah, I got, I actually got locked in the bathroom area at Home Depot a couple weeks ago. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> well, they were they cleaning were, it? No, they had oh. the, um, you know, the forklift things or, you know, the lift to get things off the way top shelves and you know how they like cordon off areas and yeah I went in and then when I came out it was the doorway to get out was cordoned off so I had to sit there and wait until they were done luckily it wasn't too long because they knew I think they I mean I know they knew I was in there but anyway yep oh yeah, I was trying to find Different that when view. you were talking. 
but it, for my it, story, my Home Depot for your, story, for your Home Depot story, because then I could look intently and just yeah, you know, yeah, it's a good story. It was it was actually pretty <laughs> funny. I was thinking that because I've seen some places where they close the um, like little gates across the whole bathroom, so it's like the bathroom's off limits, and then they clean it. And so mm-hmm. it'd be funny if you happen to be trapped in there. Yeah. Wait, I'm still inside. Yeah. <laughs> the person's in the other bathroom cleaning the other one. You're like, uh, what do I do now? Yep. But nope, that was that not the story. No. No. And luckily I wasn't like in the actual bathroom, you know, that little foyer area. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> the the greeting area <laughs> to the bathrooms. <laughs> the greeting area. <laughs> yeah, it's that's where you decide if you really want to go in or not. You can still back out. It's not too late. No, it's where you, you you talk to the people that are coming out. Like, is it safe? Can I go in? What's going on in there? Does it smell? Yep. Or baby changing Home Depot's area. usually pretty good. They keep their bathrooms pretty clean. Most, most Really, most places do. No. Even, what? No. Did you just say no? no? Okay. Okay. I guess, <laughs> I guess for the standard... Of standing to use the bathroom. Yeah. They're all okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, girls' bathrooms are always worse. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, there's, yeah, no, they're not all the same. <laughs> there, There's a lot that are really gross. And I don't know, usually like TJ Maxx's and Marshall's, those type of stores have really awful ones. <laughs> Walmarts are usually really awful. You know, what's your point now, which is just kind of funny, that you said places that have more clothing shopping, but mm-hmm. then the Home Depot, which is more of a home improvement store, has the cleaner bathroom. Yep. So the audience that, or the um, customers that go to each different place, it's, it's interesting because you probably have less females going to the Home Depot and using the bathroom than you do. Maybe. You know, maybe the traffic's higher. I'm not saying like it yeah. taken away from the fact that you just don't care. But well um, maybe I, I definitely think it could be that. Although I do usually see a lot of women going into those bathrooms probably more than or just as often as other stores. But uh you I have think a just as often. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, so. yeah, but I think um Home Depot and like Lowe's and stuff like that, they have a lot of employees Mm. and they probably just Mm. have like a better schedule and people that, you know, more people to do it and are, are, are willing uh, because maybe they like working there. Yeah. I was just thinking because of the fact that the traffic would be higher at those, but. Maybe yeah, staffing, but... yes, I can see staffing because you're right. There's always so many people at the home depart or the the home improvement stores. Yeah, like every <laughs> aisle, there's yes, so many there's people. never a it's shortage like... of people. Yeah, and like all the I, you know, all the registers are open. Plus, they have all the the self serve ones now, and and there's always people there. And yeah, you can't walk two feet. You're, I mean, it's so nice because when you're looking for something, there's somebody there. But yeah, you go to the other stores and there's like always a line out the door or, you know, wrapped around the store just to pay for your two little, <laughs> your t-shirts or whatever <laughs> that you're getting at the stores. And I don't know, it's like the, nobody cares about the bathrooms, which is fair because having worked food service, like. Did food service have to maintain the, the the staff have to maintain the bathroom at that point? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have janitors or anything. So. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking through it now. It's, it's not something that in my germophobia world, I ever considered that the person just cleaned the bathroom is serving my food or cooking it now. (laughs) Uh, It's usually not the cooks, but yeah. You know, I was just thinking there was a secret person that was, that was like their whole job. They just sat back there and waited until it was dirty enough. And then they came out and they never had any interaction with my food areas or, and, and I'm not saying that you can't serve food. I just don't think you're, your quality of washing may be up to you my just, you standards. You just don't want to know. Yeah, I just don't want to know. I mean, there's nothing. 
there's no judgments here, but it's just kind of like, eh, I never thought of that. So, and that's how things get eliminated. And I start thinking about them. <laughs> yeah, uh, Craig was mentioning that the home improvement stores pay better. But I do, like the Gen Z at the clothing stores, I will have to disagree about that just because, uh, at, well, at the ones that we, the ones down here, it's usually a much older, much, much older staff. <laughs> so, but yeah, no. And I just don't think that the companies want to put money into it. They're just like, eh, if they're gross and people don't want, won't go in there and they'll just keep shopping, you know, <laughs> they're going to buy stuff online anyway. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. All right. Well, now that we've talked about bathrooms for five minutes. Yep. That's my job. That's and Craig's what I'm here making to do. up excuses why he wasn't here on time. Mm -hmm. uh, what's our first article? We have um, something I can't find. Oh, I was already on it. That's why I can't find it. Ta-da! Ta-da! They can't see it. Where should we stand on this one? Wow, we shouldn't even be in this frame. I don't have one of those. Uh, I like I like this up a little bit higher. The last. Hold one. on, let me switch this. Or just and out. Do, oops. I didn't do anything. And then we do one of these guys. Oh, there yes. we go. Now you can see everything. Well, what is this blurry image? It looks like something from the James Webb telescope to me. This is the first picture of an exoplanet. What is an exoplanet? Yeah, I don't know. What is an exoplanet? It doesn't tell me yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually measuring photons from the atmosphere of the planet itself. To me, that's very exciting, says Sasha Hinckley of the University of Exeter in England. The planet is about seven times the mass of Jupiter and lies more than a hundred times further from its star than Earth sits from its sun. Direct observations of this planet show it's young. About 10 to 20 million years old compared with more than 4 billion year old Earth. Cool. Those Man. features, those three features, size, distance, and youth make it relatively easy to see. So a good planet to test James Webb Telescope's observing abilities. And the telescope has once again surpassed astronomers' expectations. Yep, my expectations are also surpassed. Not very far away. No, it's pretty close. Yeah, it's just down around the corner. Yep. <laughs> it's funny, it's so big too. 100 times the size of Jupiter. That's crazy. Or no, no, no. I got that wrong. Seven times. Right? Seven times and then 100 times further. So then, does the fact that it's bigger, seven times bigger, help it stay warmer? I mean, is, or is it cold since it's so far away? I don't know. I wonder what its surface temperature would be. Well, it's still young, so it might still be hot. Yeah, yeah, it probably is. Probably. <laughs> it's just like you step foot on the planet and everything melts. Yep. Like, mm, well, if it's like Jupiter, it. then you're you'll never step foot on it. You'll be toast before that. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you had a special that suit? Toast. That was your toast. <laughs> Like that was the opposite of a toast sound. Um, what kind of suit could you have? I don't know one that doesn't have you die. Oh, yeah, the no dying suit. Mm -hmm. Everybody first, needs one of those. <laughs> first, you probably need a, a spaceship that does the no dying part because yeah, the atmosphere and it's pretty volatile, right? Big storms, stuff like that. Probably. Cool. Very cool. Hinkley's been waiting six years. 
These are wavelengths of light that we've never seen, that we've never ever seen exoplanets in before. I've literally been waiting for this day for six years. That's awesome. I, I couldn't imagine working on my project for six years and then it finally working. I mean, like one year projects seem horrible enough. Yeah. Mm, that's cool. Very cool. Oh, yep. Yeah, this is a probably a violent and turbulent atmosphere that is filled with clouds. Cool. All right. Next up, we have. What is that? We have this. Have you seen this before? What Does anybody it? have a guess what this this picture <laughs> is? No one knows. This is the first time we've ever seen it. Wait, I don't have this one. This article. What do you mean? It's one of yours. Mercury. Oh, hey, that's a good guess. But not. We have a different red planet. <laughs> And I think Mercury was only colored maybe red. <laughs> is anybody going to earn some extra beans today? I'll give away 100 beans to the correct yeah. answer. Then I'll have to open up a tab during our break to give the beans away. Oh, yeah. Free beans. Well, I'll start reading about it and let people guess. You get one more new guess, Craig, because your first one was good. Uh, let's see, I got it. NASA's InSight lander detects stunning meteoroid impact on a planet. NASA's InSight lander recorded a magnitude four, <laughs> I almost said it too, uh, last <laughs> December, but scientists learned only later the cause of that quake. A meteoroid, meteoroid strike estimated to be one of the biggest seen since NASA began exploring the cosmos. What's more, the meteoroid excavated boulder-sized chunks of ice buried closer to the equator than ever. Yeah, there we go, Craig. Uh, found before discovery with implications for the future plans to send astronauts to the red planet. Yep, that's the color of Mars. That's what Mars looks like. Yep. At least um, drawn by, uh, I don't know if it, Adobe. <laughs> it says credit <laughs> Marshall. Marshall stock. That's a stock image that this uh, article used. So they couldn't even get a real image, which is kind of funny. Probably not that red, but maybe. Yeah, Agency's maybe. lander felt the ground shake during the impact while cameras aboard the Mars. Reconnaissance orbiter spotted the yawning new crater from space. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Wow. An impact real time re being recorded. And then you can go. Um, the meter, Did it say how far it was from the impact? The, the thing? The <clears throat> lander? Mm hmm. I think so. Yeah, uh, meteoroid is estimated to span 16 to 39 feet. Small enough it would have burned up in Earth's atmosphere, but not in Mars. Oh, mm. whoa. It created a crater 492 feet across and 70 feet deep. Holy smokes. Uh, uh, what is the size of a bus? Can you Google what the size of a school bus yep. is? Length. Images and seismic data documenting the event. This is believed to be one of the largest craters ever witnessed forming any place in the solar system. Well, I witness this often. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Many large craters exist on the red planet, but are significantly older and predate any Mars mission. On average, the length of a school bus is around 35 feet. Okay. So a circle the size of a school bus in diameter 
hit, yeah. hit the planet and created something, I don't know what, 10 times larger? <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. That would have destroyed something. And then they felt the shock of it. Like, it's not, to me, that's not a very big rock, right? A school bus size. It's big. Don't get me wrong. It's big. Yeah. But when I'm thinking of space, it's not, like, to me, that's the, like, tiny. It's like a pebble. And so, yeah. Huh. That's well, good. what's weird, too, is that, that something that big would be small enough to still burn up in our atmosphere. Yeah, that, that too. That, too. Like, what? That's good. Okay. <laughs> I wonder if something flew through where there was the hole in the ozone. Um, if it had less resistance, if meteor strikes were more common in that area. What was that over Australia, somewhere over in that area? Wherever that whole ozone hole used to be or because we fixed it basically. Because <laughs> we forgot about it. We're like, oh, it's over in that No, area. actually it's been healing itself. Once we got rid of whatever the aerosol stuff, um, cut that out, and really, because they really, remember when we were kids, they yeah. really pushed hard was, on that. Yeah. It was like evil to have an aerosol can. Yep. <laughs> and they were pretty common and for the younger people that may possibly someday listen to this. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think everybody on this everything. remembers. Yeah. It was what? Yeah, they talked about it everywhere. All the commercials and everything. And that's all we heard about was this hole in the ozone. But aerosols, they were the best. Yep. Spray and spray and spray and spray. You shake the can up and the stuff came out. You didn't have to do this stupid pumping with your hands. It was like so easy. <laughs> you know, it was like yep. what self-driving cars are now for cars. Yep. <laughs> but they took it away from hands. us. They took yep. it all away. And now we've had flat hair ever since. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. There's still probably some company out there that's making it. I have actually, I have Aqua, AquaNet, which is a hairspray um, for my 3D printing. And I, it's in an aerosol, but I think they, they fix the whole chemical makeup of it, I think. Yeah. If they yeah. change it. No CFCs or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if anything flew through those holes. That'd be kind of cool. Sorry for uh, Mars. They don't have an atmosphere, so they just get smacked. <laughs> I made a torch in the house. <laughs> when I was a kid, I made. we had an unfinished basement, and I would spray hairspray on the floor and then light it <laughs> inside the house. I think you're about to get grounded. Uh, yeah. Retroactively. <laughs> Retroactively? No, yeah. I had a fire problem. <laughs> I think, yeah, my brother almost burnt the house down before, too. But I did know better. I only did it once with the putting the lighter in front of it and blowing it, you know, because that, that, that seemed dangerous. That yeah. one was like, mm. yep. and then they talked Probably about that. Smartest. Yeah, following it back. All right, next up we got. Uh, I guess with my thing over here. What do we got? Ooh, that's pretty. And we'll stay floating in the sky. That's cool. I have a feeling that that's not real. Uh, this one is. says, <laughs> this is an artist conception. Yeah. A star <laughs> that strays too close to a supermassive black hole ends its life in a spectacular light show known as a tidal disruption event. That's what the picture caption says. So it's kind of funny. I would say a lot of our space stuff is not real. Yeah. Illustrated, colorized, according to what we think things may be, or just to give a spectrum so that scientists can look at data points. We learned about that a while ago, right? Or how they choose uh, how to colorize certain things because everything would be an infrared light. And then they layered in, um, I forget what was it, just by common. Like it was something to do with distance yeah, what, or heat. Yeah, what the gases or what, yeah. yeah. Makeup is. 
-hmm. So then it's not even really real colors, but it's just the colors of the representation of what's that planet. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so then they can see the different things easier. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah. It's still pretty, though. It is. It is. Let's see. Yeah, I am so zoomed in on everything. That's interesting. Uh, rare. Mid-sized black hole caught devouring a star. Technique could reveal missing population. Thought to be key in assembly. <laughs> like, I was, all right, I stopped at technique could reveal a missing population where we got people disappearing in a black <laughs> hole. This, yep. is, this is worse than La Bria. I mean, it's like, at least they fell into some kind of prehistoric <laughs> land. And, you know, this one's like, we don't even know where they're going. Yep, no idea. I'm just getting ripped apart if everything's accurate. <laughs> black holes don't, as far as we know right now, you do not want to go into a black hole. Mm -mm. Nope, you'll end up in the planet of the apes. <laughs> Is that what that travel portal was? A black hole? Yeah. Well, one of them, yeah. I think. It's, it's I just funny. There's lots of movies and yeah, that's where you go and you get to go into something cooler. Nah, yep. science right now says the gravitational forces are just going to rip you apart. <laughs> That's it. Yep. When it comes to the size of black holes, there's no conspicuous gap in the middle. Astronomers have discovered dozens of small ones and tens of gargantuan ones. Tens? Is it like tens of thousands? I was waiting for an extra word. But only a handful of bits. What? What are we talking about here? Well, you can't see black holes unless they're eating something. I mean, you just assume that they're in the middle of all the galaxies or, you know. That's what that's what I understand. They don't really oh. know where the other ones are. Uh, I, was, I was totally misunderstanding this. They're talking about the size, the actual physical size of them. So yeah. there's small ones and giant ones, but there was never middle-sized ones? Yeah. Just a few. Well, we had, we just had the black hole get discovered that's here in the Milky Way, right? Or, right? Isn't that like kind of like they just recently, I thought we talked about this, yeah. where well, there was I something being that... drug over by it? Some some kind of orbit was out of whack, and they think there's a black hole in our galaxy. Besides in the middle? Besides the middle? Maybe this was a different black hole then. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, we've talked about, we've had articles where they're seeing more of what's of the black hole in the middle of our galaxy, but I don't think it's um, new. I thought, was it? That we couldn't see it before, and now we can. Uh, I think. Or was this like using? Uh, we'll have to go back and dig that back up. Is that well, because I, I don't go think ahead. I don't know if you can ever really see a black hole because it's there's nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. Well, <laughs> you can, you could, in the way of it would block what's behind it, right? Yeah. That would be one I way. Don't know. Because you wouldn't be able to see past it. Yeah. On the other side of it. And there would be stars on the other side, technically. But then there's so much black space probably in between stars that it gets lost yeah. in that. But they, yeah, yeah like you're right. You're it. absolutely right. You can't see it. But I, when I say being able to see it, being able to see it in reference to outlines. Yeah, because there's a void or whatever. A void. But then they were, the article I'm thinking of, but I, now now that you're talking about it, I think it was about in another galaxy. But uh, they were seeing something rotate and it was oblong and it wasn't mm -hmm. rotating properly it was getting pulled some near something yeah I, I i'm starting to remember what you're talking about i can't i, I can't recall the article we'll have to go go back and check go that. back through all our videos and <laughs> no just our articles <laughs> no 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 and and i'll give we'll just watch all the thousand videos. beans to whoever finds it in all our videos <laughs> <laughs> Actually, everybody that's been uh, that's in chats watched pretty much all our videos. Yeah, I was just saying. Yeah, Craig would probably find it and get a thousand beans, and then lose it all, <laughs> and end up in Davy Jones's locker. Oh, okay. Although I think he won the last the last game, right? Yeah, I think On he lost. Game. Yep. 
Or you, but what's the what's the one that you usually do? Is it oh slots? <laughs> he did it. <laughs> slots one thousand. <laughs> he doesn't even have a thousand. I wonder no, what it'll the, do. We'll take all negative? his money. Yeah, that'll be funny if no, he just no. takes what you got. That's hilarious. So now we found mid-sized black holes. Why? Why? Sometimes when I read these articles, I'm like, why wouldn't you think there's like you got big ones and small ones? Why wouldn't there be something in the middle? They just well, don't where, exist. That's where they're saying there's a conspicuous gap. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's like it's not even almost worth writing about because it's just obvious that you would have it. How did it get to be a big size? Did it just go from tiny to giant instantly? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you're like, it, <laughs> it swallowed something and it just gets big really fast. Yeah. The mid-sized black hole was bagged by the young supernova experience, a collaboration of, astronom of astronomers that is primarily looking for stars that explode at the end of their lives. The team uses pan stars, a pair of 1.8 meter telescopes in Hawaii to look at the same patch of sky every few days. The hope is to catch a supernova explosion in the first hours or days after it starts. Wow. But in 2020, they caught something else in their net, a rapidly brightening object in a dwarf galaxy nearly 1 billion light years away. We were very, 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 very lucky. We just jumped on it. Yep, lots of berries. Yep. They continued to observe the object over the following days and weeks using several ground-based telescopes. Yeah, they're like, oh, crap, we found something, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets out their telescope. It's just like they have them in backpacks and they're all busting them out. Like in a contact. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly, exactly like, like that. Hey, get on it. Yep. How its brightness, uh, its light curve, how its brightness changes over time, it's peaked just over 13 days and then began a long, slow decline. The shape of the light curve and features in the light spectrum didn't match those from a supernova. It seemed more like a tidal disruption. The light show put on when a giant black hole containing millions or even billions of solar masses rips apart a star. Cool. I can think of a good um, sound effect for that one. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Break time. I'm ready. Switch, switch, switch. Actually, I'll leave that up. Without, uh, yeah, that's a cool. That's a cool one. Link us. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. We're gone. So we'll be back in two minutes. Oh, uh, I didn't even accept Craig's thousand slot. <laughs> I know. It, it's like, no. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'm going to start a heist for us real quick. There we go. All right, we'll be back. Yep.
Hello, hello, hello. I don't have jokes. So. I do. Oh. But I'm recalibrating first. Recalibrating. Recalibrate. I don't know. I'm trying to look at mine. Okay. Uh, I almost said the same one again. What's blue and covered in feathers? A turkey holding its breath. <laughs> do better. Yeah, you gotta do better than that one. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best song to play while cooking a turkey? It's all about the bass. Oh man. Yeah. Why was the turkey put in jail? I don't know. The police suspected foul play. <laughs> oh man. All right, we're going to move on from jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 enough of that. Okay. So what do we got up next? We have cactus. Oh, hello. Change of scenery. Oh, yeah, let's mix it up. What are cockatoos doing these days? I don't know. Getting into people's trash. <laughs> Weighing down or wedging the trash bin lid closed deters these pesky parrots, but they may adapt. <laughs> so instead of the raccoons, they, uh, they got some cockatoos. Australians do not have to worry about the raccoons. They got the oh. cockatoos. <laughs> I don't know. Raccoons probably can't live in the wild because they're not tough enough. Yeah, right? There's probably way too many things that could eat them down there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're hardcore. Like if you, cockatoos? <laughs> yeah. If you're an animal living in Australia, you're hardcore. Well, he, they can fly. <laughs> Anything that flies yeah. gets to be small and tiny. And yeah. Not very, not very mean. <laughs> In Sydney, the birds have learned how to open garbage bins and toss trash around the streets as they hunt for food scraps. People are now fighting back. They're not hurting. About time. Yeah, that's about time. <laughs> They're not hurting them, but they are putting bricks, pool noodles, spikes, spikes. Oh, that sounds like that's hurting them. Shoes and okay. sticks are just some of the tools Sydney residents use to keep the my mouse is over it. sulfur crusted. Really? Sulfur? Crested cockatoos from opening trash bins. The goal is to stop the birds from lifting the lid while the container is upright, but still allowing the lids to flop open when a trash bin is tilted to empty its contents. Isn't sulfur yellow? Maybe that's why. Because they got yellow on their heads? Probably. Good call there. Uh, I watch too much Supernatural, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this interna international, interspecies <laughs> battle, international battle. Oh yeah. my gosh, this, thing's, this is getting big. This is it's like huge. birds war, the bird war. We'll talk about it in the future. Mm -hmm. Remember, remember it started with the cockatoos getting into our trash and then all the other birds joined in. Birds would take yeah. us out if they chose to. Birds and ants yeah. could definitely team up. Oh, that would be a horrible way to go. I just heard a weird thing. I don't know. This is not at all. No music. Oh, uh, yeah. I see that. Yeah, no music on the non-official uh, break screen. Oh, yeah. What happened with our thing? Who died? Uh, the rest escaped. The handful of plunder. A tale of plenty. Patricia. Patricia died. Mm. Aww. But she's still winning. She still has the most beans. By a lot. <laughs> yeah, she's just like... Where's us at? Oh, we got 238. We're, we're number four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see. I want to play some slots real quick. Totally 
squirrel moment. <laughs> I know. Is it slot? Here we're talking about cockatoos. <laughs> um, yeah, giant battle. And then usually a low level protection, then cockatoos figure out how to defeat that. Yeah, they're smart. Birds are smart. I don't know why people think birds are dumb. Or any animals. Are, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, you can see my you screen. Uh, can yeah. I switch for them? Let's see if I can get this for everybody. This is a good picture. Oh, nope. Let's go back over here. Put this up. Copy. Put that in a new tab. And drag to PC. Look at this. This is hilarious. They weren't kidding about the spikes, huh? Yeah, but they don't look like very, like, frightening spikes to me. No, but if you were like pipe cleaners. landing on it, <laughs> probably still wouldn't want to land on it. Belly first. I don't know. Maybe they can dodge around them and then kind of just bend them over. Mm. I imagine they're wired, but I was expecting, like, spiky spikes, like needles. Uh, like, like you're not punk, doing it punk yet. Rock? Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly, like punk rock. But nope, they're just doing that. Huh. Well, good luck, Australians. Yep. Aww, look at this cute little guy. So cute. I lost my beans. Oh, no. Our beans. Yeah. Rude. <laughs> Armadillos are so cute. And there's little dude joining the show again. Oh, hey, little dude. I'm deciding to play with this toy in the background that makes noise. Perfect. Yeah. We got some sound effects now. Sound effects. Leprosy spurs growth in armadillo. Armadillo. Armadillo livers <laughs> offering clues to organ regeneration. What? Yeah, weird. This discovery may help researchers probe liver diseases and develop new treatments. Armadillos stash a secret under their shells. Their livers grow dramatically when they are infected with the bacterium that causes leprosy in people. This oddity revealed in a new study may provide clues about how the body controls liver regeneration and how to jumpstart the process in people. The finding is very cool, says hepatologist uh, Alejandro Soto Gutierrez. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm of the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine who wasn't connected to the research. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's awesome because he just said it was very cool. The, the finding's very cool and they're like, we need to put this in the article. <laughs> yeah, this is about, like, this, this dude over sense. here says it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Almost all animal work on liver regeneration involves rats or mice, he notes. So it's refreshing that scientists are learning from a different species that may furnish novel insights. <laughs> oh, he's like, I got to deal with her. I, I, they only let me play with rats and mice. Man, I wish I could yeah. go over to that other university. <laughs> yeah, for the armadillo research. Yeah, Although cool. I would be scared. Like, I like looking at armadillos, but I would be scared to get leprosy. I don't think they're that cool. Like, it would cool be enough scary. To... It would be scary to do research on them because, you know, you could get sick and become a leper. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I completely <laughs> like. I'm like, I'm good with that research. It's like, oh, you're in charge of dealing with stuff that can ruin your life. Mm, yeah, good. I'll stick with the rats and mice thing. Yeah, uh, would they have some kind of problem in a 
college laboratory just recently. I mean, I imagine these accidents happen, but you know, students working on stuff um, that mm -hmm. probably wasn't even that bad. But yeah, things happen. And well, <laughs> if you want to go with, it depends what version of stories that you like to listen to. But there was a recent version of um, a large outbreak of something that came from a mishandling in a lab. But um, that may or may not be true. I don't know. It's just stories. Just just nighttime stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like you said, things happen. I remember, um, I can't remember what the experiment was, but in my chemistry class in college, we had to do one of the experiments outside. Our teacher, every, every day of class in the beginning, he would do an experiment, which was so cool. But we had to do one outside because... Um, it had set off the fire alarms um, one year and they made him do it outside <laughs> after that. So, I mean, and that's a teacher. It's something he'd been doing for a long time prior, but yeah, he just one wrong step and <laughs> <laughs> you're outside. Whole building, yeah, whole buildings having to go outside. Yeah. And that's how it goes. You're, you're good until it's, it's not cool anymore. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you burn something or injure somebody. Yeah. Cost the school money. But what doesn't cost the school money is growing giant pumpkins. So cool. I want to draw. Draw. Oh boy. I want to grow a giant pumpkin. I called it a turkey earlier, so I'm I'm on a roll. <laughs> Cinderella has to get to the ball. How to reach the palace on time? Her fairy godmother waves a wand and poof! A nearby pumpkin morphs into a beautiful carriage. The fairy godmother is a magical stretch, but a massive pumpkin, but massive pumpkins are very real. How do you grow these giant Goliaths? And yeah, how, how do they consistently grow in grow them? I don't know. What do you think? Um I don't know. Is it they just water them? Well, that's probably one thing. A pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it happens when you don't water them. I've, plenty, I've done plenty of research on that topic. <laughs> Giant pumpkins need a lot of water and sugar, and they need oh. it fast. A typical giant pumpkin grows from seed to a huge orange squash in only 120 to 160 days. At peak growth, it's putting on 15 kilograms or 33 pounds every day. What? That's like daily. You can see it grow. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can literally watch it inflate itself. It's like blowing up a slow balloon. A That's fast balloon. Fast balloon. I mean, how many balloons have you seen grow by 33 pounds in a day? <laughs> well, I don't even know if they make it to one pound. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pure insanity. What? That's like I, daily I, adding a two year old child to its mass. <laughs> throw a kid. <laughs> He's going to throw another kid on it. <laughs> that's like a little shop of horrors now. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep, exactly. You only like have that. to throw a child at it a day. And you'll have a giant. No wonder they get big pumpkins. <laughs> I, I would make a bad joke, but I'm going to keep it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, the stem grows. Stem is so narrow that you can still easily get your hands around it. To study how pumpkin stems transport so much food and water, she asked growers of giant pumpkins to donate small slivers of their. Competition fruit. She also got so somebody's studying, and then giant pumpkins in competition don't have the nice round shape you expect. They're not beautiful. They're saggy. Giant pumpkins get flatter and flatter as they expand in size. Gravity, yeah, gravity. Ooh, that'd be cool to grow one in like a vacuum or something. I would wonder if it would if you could kind of like if it. I know that's not removing gravity, but I was wondering what yeah. that would do to it if it would help keep it up. Because you can't, like, I don't know if we have anything big enough that's anti-gravity, right? 
like a containment unit. I've never heard of yeah, anybody I having one. I haven't. No. Like yeah, like <laughs> anything more than maybe what they just do astronaut training for a short period of time in, but I wouldn't think you'd be able to leave a pumpkin. Or like in water? <laughs> yeah, they do. Oh, yeah, that's the obvious one, a lot of water. So you would grow it in water? That'd be interesting. Like uh, where the when you said astronauts, it reminded me, and NASA has that big pool where they go in and they do all the <laughs> yeah. There's just like, and there's a giant pumpkin. <laughs> that's exactly. <laughs> don't mind the pumpkin in the corner yeah. we're just running that's a that's a moon the end hello nothing oh. the dude decided to start playing with his ball toy again i'm just looking Aww. at him he's not even looking at me he's just intent yep he's like i'm busy I'm trying to get it they can you can make canoes out of giant pumpkins in fact, there's a yearly boat race in Windsor, Canada. Really? Open to <laughs> giant pumpkins only. That's awesome. <laughs> so. Wait, in the winter? Well, I'll probably hold. Let's, let me go back. Is that what it was? And, and there's a boat race in Windsor, Canada, not winter of Canada. Yeah, but when is it? Just fall? Curious. Probably in the fall. Yeah, but Canada's cold in the fall. <laughs> so. To you, to you, Canada is in an ever state of winter. You're yeah. like, they just always It really winter. is. <laughs> Are they allowed to have boat races? Do they have lakes? Do people actually go out and do stuff? That, go outside? I don't know. That sounds, it just sounds very cold. That's a lot of um, trust to put in your pumpkin boat. I guess other, if it doesn't work out, then you're just doing the polar bear, whatever. whatever. Polar bear. <laughs> it's just both at the <laughs> same time. Yeah. Uh, it starts out as a pumpkin canoe and then, yeah. 55 yeah. degrees and ice everywhere. That's yeah, that's... Craigslist. It was 55 here yesterday for a good chunk of the day. It's like 25 here. Days. Okay, that's cold. You win. The last three days or so. Probably colder with wind chills. Yeah, no but sure. that's why you learn how to make fire. Right? Ah, fire. Yep. And they just found the earliest signs of cooking by prehistoric humans. Almost a million years ago. Three quarters of a million years ago. Predating the available data by some... <laughs> 600,000 years. I would check those statistics oh. then. Like, if all of a sudden you get something that's 600,000 years later, yeah. and you're only at, like, if they were at millions of years, 600,000 is nothing. But then if you're only at previously 180,000 years, <laughs> then you add 600,000 to it, check your research a little bit. But we're going to go with it because it's in our one of our favorite places, Science Daily. Yep. And, um, the remarkable scientific discovery has been made by researchers from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Cat, come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, man, he's all into playing the game, too. <laughs> he got, he's got two arms, and he's hitting it back and forth to himself. Because <laughs> it's like Aww. a circle ball thing, and he's just laying yeah. on it with his two arms. It's funny. He's like That's sweet. Waiting for somebody to come play. If I make enough noise, it'll work. A uh, close analysis of the remains of a carp-like fish found at Gesher Benut Yaquav archaeological site in Israel. Sorry, sorry for um, everybody that knows how to pronounce that place. GBY, I'll go with that. GBY. Yep. Shows yep. the fish. It wasn't on purpose. <laughs> that was no, that one's horrible. <laughs> that 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 one's Gesher Benut, but I know it's gonna be not. There's no little fancy apostrophes around it i don't know yeah. um cooking is defined as the ability to process food by controlling temperature at which it is heated and includes a wide range of methods until now the earliest evidence of cooking dates approximately 170,000 years ago the question of when early man began using fire to cook has been the subject 
of much scientific discussion for over a century. These findings shed new light on the matter and was published in Nature, Ecology, and Evolution. Cool. That is cool. I mean, it makes sense that it would be a fish that they found. I mean, I would... I don't, I, it's funny. I was thinking of eating a raw fish, and the first thing I thought of was Gollum. <laughs> In uh, Lord of the Rings. Or a <laughs> Hobbit. <laughs> when he was eating the, the fishies. Yeah. But... I'm just trying to think. I mean, we... That's that's the interesting thing because I've been watching you watch a lot of the history and mystery stuff about the planet, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of evidence that points to a lot of lost civilizations. A lot of time period, we have a lot of gaps and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and people want to. <laughs> it's funny because like we explained it back in the like the 1920s through like let's say the 60s, right? People, scientists were like, this is the way it was, and then people still stand by that today. And they don't ever yeah. accept like, well, we have all this other evidence that kind of suggests that's not true, but we don't know what happened. You know, they can't say, hey, this is what happened. So then the people that are still standing by the old evidence are like, well, you don't have any new evidence. Because I was just listening to somebody talk about a whole lost group that like just they it shows like certain things were in place and then they just disappeared. And the explanation is, oh, they just migrated. <laughs> it's like, well, you have all these other things that show that they probably didn't migrate, that they were probably wiped off the face of the earth because of something. And so, yeah. you know, did we, were we able to cook? And, but then it gets me thinking, the reason I brought this up, fishing makes more sense because it's less, um, like there's not as much danger to it to yourself. You know, yeah. you could catch something big, but you can just cut your line in theory and let it go. When you're out hunting animals, and especially at that time when there was probably crazy stuff and a lot more of them, then, yeah, yeah you may be hunting something, but there's probably other things hunting you. <laughs> so Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, and if you, yeah, I mean, you're, you injure the animal and you're chasing after it, waiting for it to, you know, finally die or whatever. And then, but that you know the injured animal is going to attract other predators so yeah it, it had to have yeah, been so very fishing good. makes more sense that that was more <laughs> common <laughs> i'd be like yeah. nah i'm one of the gatherers today <laughs> you guys yeah. can go on your <laughs> adventure yeah unless you were unless you were fishing in the loch ness i'll be like i'll, I'll hang out here and i'll, I'll watch <laughs> over the camp I, i'll there guard the camp <laughs> I'll cook the fish. I'll cook I'll the cook fish. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I would not have been a strong warrior. <laughs> I don't think I was mentally built for that because I'd, I'd just be questioning too many things. I'd be like, guys, guys, uh, why are we doing this? Let's just fish. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> uh, and then you'd have like you'd have your meat eaters. They'd be like, no, we're going to get meat. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'll fish go. Is meat. <laughs> So, all right, final quick break, a one yep. minute break. Is that going to be long enough? I think so. Cool. I just need to freshen I'll up. Make it work. And then we're going to go into turkey season. Yes. Can't wait. Ooh, that's wrong. Divide that in half, everyone. <laughs>
back yet, friend? I'm heisting it up for everyone that wants to join. I'm going to slot it up too. I wonder if they hold your money. Wow, that would be a cool way to trick it. If you could bet all your money on the heist, let that go, and then bet all, like, do a bunch of slots to where it drains your money. And then I wonder if you'd get both. And hopefully you hit the slots in the meantime, but then if the heist went bad, then it would subtract your money. You'd have to time it just right. Wait, what? Nothing. I was yeah. trying to figure out how to game our little system. So, okay. If you join or start a heist with all your money, right? Is that money already taken away the moment you start it? Or does it hold... Do they hold it and not take it away until they decide? <laughs> Any slots is bad in gaming. Um, <laughs> do they hold it? Like, does it not really go anywhere until the final outcome comes, right? So then in the meantime, you could play slots with your money that you don't even have. It's kind of like what FTX just did with, with their crypto, with their customers' money. <laughs> <laughs> You have a hundred percent loss. Wow. Look at this. I'm going to have a hundred percent win because I bet a hundred beans. I think that's almost all our money now. Hopefully we don't die in the heist and lose the slots. That's going to be bad for us. But we'll just do like any good bank does. And just print some more money. Yep. Print more beans. All right. Thanksgiving. Well, who thinks they know about Thanksgiving? I do. You do? Oh, we died and Patricia died. No. I think Patricia was a little late on. No, she might have got in, but I don't know if it says. It didn't say she joined. No. That's interesting. Because, oh, plus she misspelled heist. You got an I and an exclamation point. Yeah, mistype. But it's interesting because of the, like, if it was right before the end, would it let you in? And then you would just start a new one. Um, wow, that wasn't good. Where'd, where'd my slots go? They didn't do my slots. We overloaded it. <laughs> How do we have 98 now? Where were we at before? We were at 238. We, were we just four. lost 100. And then I did 50 on my slots. <laughs> that? No, I did 100 on the slots. I don't know. But that's funny. I think it just took my money. Yeah. They're <laughs> like, no, you, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. They're like, they're not even like pretending anymore. Yeah, that's it. They're just taking it. They're like, we don't even need to show you the results. Oh, this is the best. All right. So I didn't see any guesses where Thanksgiving started. Oh, where it started? Yeah, where does the tradition come from? <laughs> Plymouth. In 1621, the Plymouth colonists and the Wampaganog. Wait, wait. I shouldn't be able to pronounce Wampanoag? it. Wampanoag? Wampanoag? Yeah, yeah, I thought that's how you said it. Sure, Wampanoag. We're going to go with that. That sounds like a better... You're a better native than me. <laughs> Shared an autumn harvest feast that is acknowledged, acknowledged today as one of the first Thanksgiving celebrations. For more than two centuries, days of Thanksgiving were celebrated by individual colonies and states. It wasn't until 1863, in the midst of the Civil War, that President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed a national Thanksgiving day to be held each November. Wow. Thanks, Abraham Lincoln. He gave us so many things. A pilgrim sniped a turkey from an Indian with his musket. The Indian had been stalking the turkey for hours, trying to stab it with its spear. So the pilgrim shared. Yeah. It's almost believable. <laughs> He's like, watch the... You what? Their turkeys aren't like the ones around here. You gotta, they just happened again the other day. I was out 
on a run and the turkeys just like went right in front of me I had to stop like stop mm-hmm. running because they were just like you wait for me lady <laughs> I'm trying to get across the street me and my pals anyway sorry <laughs> you and your pals uh, they're your friends now yeah yeah, I don't even know if I want to read this. This is because I don't even know if it's true or not, but I'm going to go with it. Um, throughout the first brutal winter, winter, most colonists remained on board the ship where they suffered from exposure. Skirt, well, this part's probably true. Scurvy and outbreaks of contagious disease. Only half of the Mayflower's original passengers crew lived to see their first New England spring. In March, the remaining settlers moved ashore where they were, received an astonishing visit from a member of of the Abenaki tribe who greeted them in English. <laughs> They're what? like, what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. like, what? You speak English? Yeah, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and nobody else around here spoke English, and now all of a sudden you do? Oh, that's awesome. Uh, several days later, he returned with another Native American squanto, a member of the Pawtuxet tribe who had been kidnapped by an English sea captain and sold into slavery before escaping to London and returning to his homeland on an exploratory expedition. Squanto taught the pilgrims, weakened by malnutrition and illness, how to cultivate corn, extract sap from maple trees, catch fish in the rivers, and avoid poisonous plants. He also helped the settlers forge an alliance with the other Indian tribes that spoke English because they must not have gotten along, (laughs) which endured more than 50 years for more than 50 years and remains one of the sole examples of harmony between European colonists and Native Americans. 50 years is not very long. No. All right. Well, we'll we'll take it. I mean, my tribe had to walk the trail of tears. It started out nice. Yeah. We'll go with we'll go with uh, fifty years of friendliness. Um, in November sixteen twenty ones, after the pilgrims' first corn harvest proved successful, blah blah blah. All right, we get it. They join together. We know the story, right? This is not off the sure traditional is. story. Um. There's some disputes on accuracy and stuff. Um, how nice people were to each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and things like that. I don't think uh, my tribe has any Thanksgiving stories. I haven't heard of anything like in specific like around Thanksgiving. Because I, I guess, I don't know. I don't know when we were introduced to settlers. Maybe you could find out. We can talk about it next week or nah, nah. next year. Yeah, next year is probably more accurate. <laughs> I'll send. I'll send uh, uh, my my son on that. On that, I'll, I'll, I'll charge oh, yeah. that. I'll have I'll have him ask the youth council. We can <laughs> like, have what's him on going the show on? and we can grill him. <laughs> we can grill him. Like, what's yeah. going on? What's what's all the traditions? Yeah. <laughs> and he's gonna be like, no, we don't talk about that. We just pick up trash in this. On the highway, and we have Halloween parties. <laughs> hmm. funny. Well, those are all good things. Yeah, oh yeah, they do cool stuff. So, um, yeah, so here's some, here's like what um, the first meeting was like. You know, <laughs> they were like, hey, you know, this is awesome. This is our land now. They got the Illuminati triangles going around. So, yep. That's all cool. And then you have really cool traditions of big giant balloons going down streets. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wish that's we had actually more really cars. cool. I was just looking at the train. Go ahead. That's mm-hmm. really cool. What? That the the balloons are down on the ground. I were I guess they got more balloony later. Or are they still like that, some of them? I never went to a Thanksgiving <clears throat> Day parade before. I got to go to one. That was awesome. I know. And yeah, it was really cool. And I would say, no, what happened was that over time, people have gotten stronger. So oh. we are physically stronger than people of the past. For anybody that knows. Wouldn't we're we not. be weaker <laughs> we're so not. that we can hold them down? <laughs> yeah, so now, oh, we're heavier. That's it. 
<laughs> I was trying to be stupid with the strength, but realistically, yeah, we've all gotten a little heavier, so we can hold them down now. Uh, no, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what what's changed. I really don't. Because, yeah, the big ones, it doesn't look like, looking at this picture, it's the same amount of people, roughly. I mean, there's not, like, 100 people holding down each balloon. It's only, like, 20 or 30, if you ever look at them. Sometimes less, because they, they, they show the when they get blowy. But, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. But that's a cool little alligator. They're like, we're just going to blow up an alligator. Yeah. I was looking through. There's more pictures on on there. Yeah, I tried to upload it like yeah, as an image, and it's not letting me select through it. Gotcha. Because so, that was the same with this one. It had like 13. But we got lots of images and lots of stuff, yeah. so 15 minutes or so. So we'll move on. Well, we yeah. all know the story. That was the story of Thanksgiving. <laughs> there was already English-speaking Indians here. <laughs> They're just like, yeah. hey, what's up? They're like, this is so convenient. <laughs> Let's see, and then this is a boring Wikipedia article that you guys can't see. I'll save you from it. Um, yeah, we got early Thanksgiving, Har Harvest Festival. So that's also another one. We got some war stuff, uh, traditional celebrations. I got some good stuff that's what I'm glossing over. And if you want to go read the Wikipedia page, you can read that page. Yeah. Everybody knows how to get to that. Um, the first Thanksgiving, according to Kids National Geographic, which we can't show images from. Um, it looks like it's almost the same story. So they just took it from the Kids National Geographic. Makes sense. Um, yeah, there's friendships forged. Um, what's the myth? Puritans are often thought of having silver buckles on their shoes and wearing somber black clothing. Their attire was actually bright and cheerful with no shoe buckles. What? My my whole life has <laughs> been a lie. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a, they should have led with that. That's like, uh, by the way, all, everything you've ever learned is not correct in the way the pilgrims yeah. looked. I'm going to bed. I can't. <laughs> how many? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> how many projects in school did we do as kids like where we... Did pilgrims and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the best. Native Americans actually didn't wear woven blankets on their shoulders. And large feathered headdresses. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Uh, I see our traditional headdresses. They have feathers. Um, Maybe we've changed that over time. But I'll, I'll have to research. But I don't think so. I mean, I've seen a lot of feather headdresses. So maybe those particular Indian tribes didn't. Yeah. Um. And I and I, I do think I think our traditional. Well, they didn't wear, wear them all the time. Yeah, right? <laughs> obviously. No, I think, no. I think like in <laughs> no. the in the pictures and stuff, like they're wearing. Like, they're always wearing you know, brown dresses with like the towel, the blanket, and then they've got like the little band with one little feather sticking out in the back. <laughs> Maybe yeah, that's yeah, what they mean. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't know. How, like, no, there is no way that they wore the traditional. Um, I would call it celebration. Um, I forget what the word is. Uh, regala, I think that's what they call it. Um, but our traditional wear, it takes forever to make. Like they all, hand, I mean, we still hand make it, and um, yeah, it takes forever. And so I wouldn't imagine they're all <laughs> crap. You're losing beads and stuff. Your feathers are falling out. They're like, man, that was a rough hunt. You come back yeah. all disheveled. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's Craig got? A pilgrim. Uh, so the pilgrim shared. Oh, he's still on the same story. Um, yeah, uh, modern. So that's that. We got some facts because we are a place of facts. They better have the that uh, pilgrims didn't wear buckle shoes, shoe buckles, and I think this is the Wikipedia. Whatever. <laughs> as, as, and, otherwise, as you're not going to believe anything they say. Look at this picture. This is the pilgrim's picture. <laughs> this is traditional pilgrim wear. This isn't bright colored stuff. No. Yeah, rude. Look at this. Black, white, black, white, <laughs> black, brown. <laughs> Even the background is brown. Yes. They blend in. Uh, what? Black, white. <laughs> feathers. <laughs> we got feathers. Hats. Brimmed hats. Buckles. Where's these buckles at? Oh, my gosh. 
It's the best. Look at this! This is what they made us dress up as. Yep. <laughs> I remember this. It was all a lie. Yep. <laughs> I remember we had a pen pal celebration uh, celebration one time. I think we went during Thanksgiving to another local elementary school because they were our pen pals. And now looking at the distance, it's like 20 minutes across town. <laughs> we were pen palling. That's hilarious. The mail, the mail was like, I wonder if the teachers just saved on stamps and just drove the letters over to the other school. Like, just here. Probably. Let's, let's meet up at the bar. Yeah. We'll <laughs> meet like, up here's your pile of letters. The other teacher's like, here you go. <laughs> oh, that's, that's probably accurate, too. That's facts. Remember, we do facts here, yep. facts that are not true. Factless facts. <laughs> Factless facts. Um, the real history of the first Thanksgiving we've talked about, but nobody really knows. Um, we know how it became a modern holiday. Abraham Lincoln was like, hey, it's a holiday. And then, um, indeed, much of the 19th century artwork and reenactments of the first Thanksgiving depicted Native Americans as savages. With woven blankets. Oh, hey, they do talk about large feather headdresses based off tribes from other regions. Yeah, that's what. So that region didn't do that stupid crap. Or, well, I think it's cool when I say stupid. Yeah. The made I know. Up I was stuff. like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I think our tribe <laughs> stuff's like, it's beautiful. Like, if you come to one of our yeah. powwows, it's pretty cool. So, but when I say they're like stupid being making up stuff, just be accurate. Who cares? <laughs> Um, they also changed the typical head dre typical dress of pilgrims to depict their religious intensity and bravery. Okay, cool. So they do keep pointing that out. I'm glad they're cleaning that one up. Yeah, um, that's crazy. <laughs> it became tied to traditional commercial aspect of the holiday of Black Friday. What is Black Friday? Ooh, that's a, that sounds crazy. I bet people die on Black Friday. <laughs> yeah, they still do. Is that like related to the Black Plague or some really bad disease? No, it's a shopping day. <laughs> All right, next up we got myths. So what kind of myths do we got? Was Thanksgiving a myth? Okay. Um, what do we got? We don't have many pictures in this one, so I'll just find a picture. Oh, what happened? I just like made my mouse scrolly go slow. This one's really negative. This article, they're, they're not cutting them any slack. <clears throat> and we'll stay on that picture real quick. Um, the myth that is friendly Indians, unidentified by tribe, welcome the pilgrims to America, teach them how to live in the new place, sit down to dinner <clears throat> with them, and then disappear. They hand off America to white people so they can create a great nation dedicated to liberty, opportunity, Christianity for the rest of the world to profit. That's the story. <laughs> it's about native people conceding to colonialism. It's bloodless in many ways, an extension of the ideology of manifest destiny. <laughs> wow. I'm not even going to read the rest of the article. Because we know it's not accurate. We know it wasn't pleasant and friendly. Like, maybe they had one meal or something together, but uh, it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there was, like, pockets of things, pocket of things being okay. But, yeah, I, I doubt that it was. I don't know. It's hard to say. <laughs> it was a, definitely a different time. Yeah. So, I'm not going to read any more of this because this is going to be just really negative. Yeah. Um, and, and. I do, while I don't disagree with some of the points, like, I don't know, put it in perspective. I'm not saying war and meanness is okay, but it's, it was inevitable at some point. Um, peace didn't last. Oh, yeah, we know that that didn't work out when you try to take people's at least sacred lands. That definitely doesn't go well. Um, the holidays dark past has some people rethinking. Thanksgiving, fair enough. I can go with that. I don't disagree. Mm -hmm. um, I'm comfortable with people, some people saying it's not nice of a holiday. Mm -hmm. um, yep. What is this? Like, just some random, yeah, I just have some random thing in here. 
<laughs> oh, I'm at the bottom of it. I was just like, what is this? <laughs> All right, so we're on to some new pictures. I gotta get my hotkeys going. Oh, yeah, here's the friendly, oh, peace pipe. So oh, that's that. how you know everything's good. Yeah, that's how you know everything's fine here. They're all like, Craig says maybe the one tribe had a flamboyant Indians that like to spice things up with the feathers. And then he started a trend. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> They're like, why are you st sticking the dead bird feathers in your hair? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that starts. I mean, it's decorations because I've seen feathers that look beautiful, like really nice <laughs> ones. And you're like, oh, I'm going to put this in my hair. But I, actually, if I was decorating my hair, even as a guy, I think flower. I guess then that's probably the guys thought the feathers look better but i think flowers look nice in hair personally yeah i that was my style for a long time i do i had clips and i would always do like flowers or i'd get um i had a bunch of headbands that had flowers or um not flowers but feathers so yeah i either had flowers or feathers or i had like little pins <laughs> and stuff i was just thinking <laughs> of the one indian that had like moss on his head I was like i'm going with moss yeah. Ooh, moss is pretty. <laughs> I know. Like, you can get it to flowers sometimes. I don't know if it's moss. It might be a different plant at that point. But, yeah. No, it's just interesting. Like, they're trying to figure out, like, they want to outdo each other. So, <laughs> it's not like you can go buy the next coolest thing. You got to, yeah, make it up. You're like, how about if we... Yep. Uh, I take berries. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Air day. I don't know. Uh, 13 surprising facts. A woman named Sarah Joseph Hale lobbied Congress for years to make Thanksgiving an official holiday. I did not know that. Oh, I do have this picture. Ooh, that doesn't look cool. I'm going to leave that. That's when the piece ended. Yep. <laughs> and it was, what I find funny is I play a lot of games where you put these little barriers up these wood barriers they don't do very good mm -mm. So, um yeah here we go we got some pumpkins originally thanksgiving may not have been celebrated in november at all probably not it's cold cold in new england in november yeah <laughs> right now no uh, you don't want to be outside uh in 1939 president franklin roosevelt moved thanksgiving one week earlier Really? I wish you would have left it like in the middle of the month. And I guess yeah. you're close to Halloween because I was like giving it more distance from Christmas. We'll just make it right in the middle. And spread out the holidays a little better instead of like at the end of the year. The first Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade in 1924 featured animals <laughs> before they blew them up. <laughs> they were like, this didn't go so well. Yeah. The lions and the stuff got loose and killed people. <laughs> yep, not very Thanksgiving. And I'm making that up. I'm not reading anything. Um, Thanksgiving leftovers led to the first ever TV dinner. What? I'm actually reading this one. In 1953, Food Corporation Swanson. Wow, they've been making those forever. Mm -hmm. um, overestimated how much turkey would be consumed in Thanksgiving and had to get creative with 260 tons of leftover poultry. Wow, they really mis misestimated that one. Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, using 5,000 aluminum trays and an assembly line of hand packers, they created a Thanksgiving-inspired meal with the uh, afore aforementioned. I never really the before mentioned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, with that turkey. turkey. <laughs> with the turkey, cornbread, dressing, gravy, peas, sweet potatoes. The dish was sold for a grand total of 98 cents. And in the first full year of production, they sold 10 million of them, birthing prepackaged frozen meal industry. Yeah, that meal is probably actually really good. Yeah, that first one was. <laughs> he okay? I just had a cough. Just a little cough. Yeah, I could tell your little guy was having having a fit. Did I mute myself properly? I don't know. Yeah, you I did. I tried to. 
Um, the dish was, oh yeah, we got that. Benjamin Franklin was very pro turkey. Cool. Um, he just liked it. <laughs> he thought it was delicious. The menu for the first Thanksgiving in Plymouth in 1621 likely included lobster, seal, and swans. Oof. Uh, I'm probably a little gamey. Um, <laughs> a little bit. Pumpkin wow, pie has been beloved for a long, long, long time, although it isn't America's favorite pie. What is America's favorite pie? Apple. Yes, apple pie. Rick's uh, favorite that I make is pecan. Mm, lie, that's a lot of people's favorite. That's very popular. You know what um, I just found out last year? That growing up, my grandma would make walnut. Her, instead of using pecan, she used walnuts because she's from <laughs> Eastern <sorry>. Washington. <laughs> yeah, she's from Eastern Washington and they had walnuts. So like, you know, this is my grandmother. So this is she, when she was a kid. And so she always used walnuts. And I was like, I knew it tasted different than pecan pie. It just never registered because you always hear about pecan pie and they look the same. Um, the taste is similar. But yeah, so I'm like, I need to make it with walnuts now. Because that's how I grew up with it. I just like never, never registered. <laughs> anyway. Did it taste the same? Did you say? Um, It's similar, but I haven't made one. Like I haven't had it. My grandma stopped. We stopped doing Thanksgiving at my grandma's when I was like 15 or 16. So. um, <laughs> So, yeah. I curious. Because, yeah. I mean, I don't know, after you um, prepare it, does it, uh, does nuts relatively taste the same? I know that yeah. walnuts actually taste quite different than most no nuts. So. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it this year, so I'll That's let cool. you know. But, yeah. Yeah, I, like I said, it total, it made perfect sense because, I mean, it looks different, too, on top because you, <laughs> you got the walnut. Anyway. Yeah, yeah um, I... I like pies. I'm not a cake as big of a cake fan, so I only like like angel food cake and ice cream cake. Which oh, is... Angel food cake's my favorite. Mm -hmm. A sponge cake, I guess I'll just make it more generic, but yeah. So Oh carrot cake. Oh <laughs> that one too. I've... Like if you have a go ahead. My mom, that's her favorite cake and for her birthday. She's they're gonna be down here for her birthday and I'm gonna make I've been practicing. And uh, my last oh, one was delicious. Rick loves carrot cake, too. Oh, I was going to say the early practice is poor Rick. <laughs> no, the first one was okay. It, it just was okay. It just got better. Ants. Oh, yeah. It was it was way better the second time. Extra carrots. And I used walnuts instead of pecans because I thought I had pecans and I didn't. I had walnuts. <laughs> and, uh, and I put less sugar in the frosting. And it was amazing. It was so good. So... I've remembered, I've updated my recipe, and I will be making it in January. Cool. That's yeah. good, because, yeah, I like it. Um, those are the cakes that I like, but I still prefer pies. I don't know if I, I wouldn't say I'm a pecan pie fan. I'm going to try some, because I don't have that flavor in my mouth to know that I like it or don't. So I'll try a bite, but I like my fruit-filled pies, typically. Yeah. All right, Thanksgiving Day football games begin in the 1870s. Female turkeys don't gobble. What? Weird. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> <laughs> the day after Thanksgiving is especially busy for plumbers. Oh, wow, I never thought about that. <laughs> what a gross and insightful uh trivia or whatever fact <laughs> the british don't officially celebrate thanksgiving well that makes sense they do british giving <laughs> oh yes it's a real thing the british increasingly embrace the american tradition to celebrate celebrate gratitude and national pride but it wouldn't be a truly British tribute without their own take on the holiday. Brits giving. Brits giving. Oh, that's okay. Now I said it better. Whatever they want to call the compassionate tradition, we're happy they welcome to happily welcome on to our table. Yeah, I like that. That's sweet. The 
pilgrims settled in an area that was inhabited by Native Americans for over 12,000 years. What? Uh, Long before European settlers, often called pilgrims, arrived at the east coast of the United States, the well, the the one people, the Womp people. Wampanoag. Yeah, you you were good at that. The Womp. <laughs> you and your uh, that's like you must have watched a lot of Family Guy. <laughs> I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> no, it's just funny because Family Guy has all those uh, types of, because um, they're from that area, Rhode Island. Oh, right. And so uh, the people had called the region known as Southern Massachusetts and Eastern Rhode Island home for more than 12,000 years. Today, about 4,000 to 5,000 Wampanoag, Wampanoag live in England, New England. I thought you were pausing, so I would say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was giving it a try. That's cool. You're, you're helping me, though. Like, yeah. I was nice. I'm ready. The Pilgrims and the Native Americans made a treaty treaty, treaty, treaty of mutual <laughs> protection. The Native Americans. So, yeah, this is horrible stuff. This is for kids. That's what yep. I said at the top. Um, what do we got here? Oh, these are traditions. Oh, All right. that's great. What do we got? I don't have new pictures, so... We're going to switch. <laughs> the, to the first topic. one is silly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? You can tell it. Well, um, find a new uh, picture. Number one, play some football. <laughs> Whether you're watching, attending, or playing, our favorite football is a big part of many families. Turkey Day itinerary. Actually, I, I've seen some people uh, in our area, they go out and play football. Big, I've seen oh, it on TV. I mean, we've, it's never been a part of any of my family's traditions. Yeah. I'm good with that. It's cold. <laughs> but yeah. then football, uh, there's a lot of high schools still wrapping up their football seasons. On Thanksgiving yep. so. Bless the food. Okay. Watch Macy's Day Thanksgiving Day Parade. Flip through I've never old... done that. You've never done that? Mm-mm. You wouldn't know how they hold the big giant floats down there. <laughs> I've seen pictures. I've seen it on TV. It's okay. Like it's relatively <laughs> boring. But um, it's awesome to go there, though. But it's super busy yeah. in New York. Super busy. Yeah. Flip through old family photos. Take a trip to a tree farm. Oh, go to your Christmas Yeah, that tree. actually is pretty cool. I like that idea. Decide which tree you're going to murder. <laughs> Throw yeah, a we welcome tailgate. Trees. What? You got what? Fake trees. <laughs> oh, I like a real tree. Yeah, down here, though, it's like not worth it. I like the tree that nobody else loves. Link and I usually go to like Lowe's. Like we have many. Ground? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We go to Lowe's on like or one of the uh, places that sells trees couple days a few days before the end of the season they're marked like 70 80 percent off before christmas <laughs> and then we get it and then we try to try to make it look pretty that's awesome that that's a super sweet tradition though you yeah. get them for like two dollars let's get this ugly tree and make it pretty <laughs> we've, we've scored some good trees where like one side just looked horrible but the other side looked all right and so you only yeah. need one side you only you only need well you need kind of like two-thirds <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, but yeah, so but you get it for like I think we paid maybe less than a dollar one time. But I know that's definitely awesome. under two dollars a lot of times. So that's our that's my secret, but it's hard. Pickings are slim. <laughs> <laughs> and there is no backup plan at that point. Like it's it's definitely um, yeah, you're, you're getting in. it. Yeah. <laughs> you're leaving with a tree. <laughs> or nothing. Or nothing. Yeah. Throw a welcome tailgate. Okay. Host a Friendsgiving. Oh, yeah. Start your own family traditions. Create okay. a festive entryway. Invite the whole <laughs> invite the whole town. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Create the longest, most welcoming Thanksgiving table. Your town or neighborhood has ever seen a casual potluck feast. That is actually pretty cool. I do. I like that idea too. That is pretty cool. I, I do like that. It would not work well with our snow, but you would maybe maybe get some place to go in and let you rent their place or you know have their place. Hopefully, you don't have to pay for it, but use it. 
That'd be cool. That would be cool. I like um, that idea. But I, I'm, I'm super like choosy about people making food. Anybody that knows me, like, yeah. If I don't well, know if, if you have good hygiene, though, problems. Just, yeah. If it's a potluck, though, you bring your own food. And... Just only eat your own. <laughs> yeah, just eat your own. Well, yeah, because I mean, the idea is to just spend time together, and okay. if people awesome. get upset that you're not eating their food, then people do. They can scoot. People do. Did you try such and such? It's like, no, nah, I didn't want to try it because yeah. I've seen them not wash their hands and yeah. not eat their food. I don't Set know up. if you let your cat on the ta- on the counter <laughs> eat your food. <laughs> yeah. Uh, set up a craft for the kids. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Celebrate guests from Thanksgiving past. So remembering those of the past. Aww, yeah. Go pecan picking to make your Christmas pecan pie. Okay, we got a bunch of crafts. Craft DIY place cards. Dine al fresco. There's just something romantic. What? If you're lucky enough to live in a warm, cl- oh, outdoors. Yeah, you hot. can't. You can't be dining al fresco. <laughs> More um, DIY stuff. Do you? Do you guys eat outdoors for Thanksgiving? Um, actually, we do. Uh, no, we don't. We spend all the time outside, but then we come inside and eat. It's like the only get together that we eat inside, <laughs> which is hilarious. Yeah, even at at uh, Christmas, we we I think we eat outside at Christmas too. Go for a post Thanksgiving walk. That's common. I, I've seen my family mm-hmm. uh, try a new recipe. I don't know if that's the time to bust out your new <laughs> recipe. Um, I'm gonna go with that. I would not recommend. People are coming to Thanksgiving for the stuff that they like. I, I would almost guarantee that. Me personally, I would be open for trying something new, but the masses, well, I would not think so. I mean, I unfortunately test out pie recipes on <laughs> Thanksgiving <guests>. unsuspecting family. <laughs> like we always show up with pies. Uh, that's how I learned that you make your pecan pies the day before. Mm. Warm pecan pie is disgusting. <laughs> It is really not good. It's it does, doesn't have enough time to set, <laughs> so make it the day before. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do a final yeah. heist to try to get some money. Huh? I, I would not have guessed that. Like people yep. like to do their warm pies. It's indifferent to me. I kind of lean towards cold pies. Um, yeah. I don't. I'm not like even apple pie, like which is traditionally you gotta have warm apple pie. I'm like. Mm. Like yeah, well, cold. because pecan pie is like, it's mostly, it's not jelly, but you know what I mean? It's like that, it's sauce, it's a saucy thing. And mm-hmm. and then it's just got pecans in it. So if you, what I learned, because it sets, you know, in the oven, but if you, if it's still warm from the oven, it does, it just doesn't have enough time for all the flavors to kind of combine. And it tasted real eggy. Because it's there's a lot of egg in it, which is not pleasant. Uh, but even like, like the pie went in the fridge, and we ate it like an hour later, and it was <laughs> amazing. It was so good. It was just like it needed that little bit more time to like, you know, let all the flavors come together. So yeah, I always make my pies the day before and then take them now. And if it if it doesn't make get done the day before, then I don't bring a pie. <laughs> Unless it's apple pie, because like you said, it's fine. Yeah, a lot of people prefer it. Huh. I never knew that. Oh, but I don't make pies. It's not my Pies wheelhouse. are super easy. Yeah, I just, just don't. So you know. uh, other people make them or I buy them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't eat many pies, so but they are good. Um we'll rattle through the rest of these and then we're gonna be done. Yep. Set the table with your kids. Mm-hmm. Make gratitude bracelets. Make a cookie wreath. Split the wishbone. That's a popular one. Oh, we one. used to do that when we were kids. Play with a Thanksgiving pin- pinata. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Host a family game night. Yep, done that. Wrap up leftovers for guests or force leftovers to be taken by guests. That's more like, I'm always like, hmm. I don't want to take leftovers. No, please take them. Okay. Yeah, I know. We always leave with tons of leftovers. And then I, and then I do end up eating some of it, but I don't like taking leftovers. 
Um, craft a beautiful centerpiece, craft creative tablecloth. I'm gonna do our outro while we're talking. Um, finish with pumpkin pie and then decorate for Christmas. Yay. Yep. Traditions. Yeah, we usually decorate for Christmas. Yeah. Thanksgiving weekend, but not this year, next year. Hey, you did it. I was trying to remember what, what did they say in Dumb and Dumber? When he's just like, you go and just when I think you can't do anything, you know, more stupid, you go and do this and completely redeem yourself. We got points. Again. Oh, so when I'm wasting our points. Um, yeah. It was like, it was you're like saying this. I'm doing really dumb stuff, spending yeah. all our points. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I did something yeah. good this time. Yep. You can you can spend all the points. That's okay. Oh, I know. Because <laughs> I can control the points. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, get we'll always be in contention. <laughs> yep. No, we're going to have a great restart at some point. Even though, uh, whoa. Craig, DB passed Craig. Huh. Yeah. We got some fierce competition going. Grandma's uh, conservative approach is not working much anymore. Uh, yeah, but she's coming. still she's still quite a bit ahead of anybody mm. else. She is a lot from us. We're like, uh, yeah, yeah, we're not even in. Uh, Ling is hasn't even. He's only played like twice, <laughs> and he's still ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Um, we have. No break. Uh, we have some stuff coming up next week, the week after, the week after that. Um, exciting. And the week after that. Yep. yep. Exciting topics. So please tune in. Thank you for joining us today. Yep. We'll see everyone next Saturday. Yep. Have an awesome holiday. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, there's a song <laughs> to it. That's cool. <laughs>